you're all fueled up, right? You're in a good mood, a positive mood, and you're ready to conquer that flat piece of paper. We're going to draw three-dimensional drawings today. We're going to use all seven magic words, plus a really important art word, variety. Now, drawing with you today, we have two special club members. You guys ready to draw? I'm ready. Yes. We have Sharon and David with us. Loosen up a little bit. Shake your fingers. Okay, your pencils are sharp, right? Mm -hmm. Your pencils. All right, now we're going to use the whole piece of paper. We'll draw some faces using variety. Now let's start by drawing an elf face. We'll start right here with a circle. You loosen up your hands. Make sure your hands are real flowing today and you have your energy up. We'll, well, we'll draw a hat, an interesting little elf hat across here. And then we'll draw a nose coming up from behind this really soft hat, the soft hat brim right here. Draw a nose and then the jowl of the character. Then later on we'll put a mouth. Now let's put an, an elf's ear right here. Oh, from about right here, come up. See how these elves' ears use a lot of variety. Now, when you use variety, you make something a little different, a little more unique than you usually see it in everyday life. You usually don't see an ear like this. So we'll draw an elf's ear, then draw the helix inside there, and then draw the ha darken in this brim. Now watch how this is a foreshortened circle. See how this is a, almost a foreshortened circle? It's about three quarters of one. And then we'll draw the thickness of it behind here and use overlapping. Now this is using variety for the hat, like a really interesting hat. And then look at this, using variety again. How about drooping the hat over? Instead of just drawing the hat going straight up, we'll use variety and do something different. Make it a little more interesting for your eye. It's almost like dessert for your eye to look at. Drawing is music to your eye. So using variety, you draw different things. Makes it more fun. Draw the hair coming out of here, different strokes. And then we'll draw the back of the hat brim. See how this is almost a foreshort foreshortened circle that's tilted up. And then draw the thickness in the back of the hat. Darken in the brim, the helix. Draw the lip. Want to make him smiling? You want to smile? Okay, we'll draw a smile with a grin. And draw the bottom of the lip. And then the bottom of the chin right here. Are you keeping up with me? I hope you're practicing your drawing 20 or 30 minutes a day. You do practice, you'll have no problem keeping up with me at all. Draw the top of the costume. And look at this. Almost a foreshortened circle with overlapping right here. Using variety because I drooped the collar down. You can make the shoulder right here. Now let's take a moment and really get to know a club member just a bit better. Hi, you know me. I'm Sharon Kim, the adorable ninth grader from Delaney Senior. And you know I take art lessons from Renata Duncan because she's very good at what she does. And you know I like to draw because people say I'm good at it. And you know I like to draw the beautiful and the bizarre, especially in pastels because the colors are easy to blend. And you know what comes between me and my Star Trek? Nothing. Live long and prosper. That's really an excellent drawing. You're keeping up with it really well, Sharon. As re remember, when you're using variety and you're drawing a hat, think of all the different ways you can draw that hat. You can draw a flat hat, a tall hat, a skinny hat, right? Or when you're drawing noses, you can do the same thing. You use variety or mm -hmm. eyebrows or glasses or anything you want. Take a look at this drawing. You use mm. variety in the drooping, used for shortening, used overlapping, really nice shading all the way through it. Starting the shoulder right here and darkness inside the collar. Good drawing, good drawing. Our special guest today, Elaine Williams, is with some club members doing some costume and some set design. Let's take a look. I'm happy to be here with Vlad and Tim. As a set designer for the theater, my job is to create the physical environment for the action of the play. To design a set, I have to wear a lot of different hats. I have to be a painter, a sculptor, an architect, even a carpenter. My job differs from that of the painter and sculptor, though, in one important way. The springboard for my ideas is the play itself. When I first read the play, I try to concentrate on what colors and shapes and forms come to mind as I read. Then I read it over and over, looking for specific details that will affect the action of the play. Uh, once I understand the play completely, I discuss it with the director. Together we'd establish a concept or a style for making that production of the play unique. Then I begin to draw. I do lots of rough sketches until a clear picture of what the environment should look like comes to mind. I present my final ideas as a color rendering that conveys the atmosphere of the play. This is for a play called Scapino that takes place 
at a seaside cafe. Often I will build a model rather than doing a rendering. A model is a scale reproduction of what the set will look like on stage. I can show the director and actors how units of scenery change position for the different scenes. Are these the same stages? Yes, they both take place on the, in the same theater, but it uses the space in a very different way. This is kind of has, this is, I think, more stages or something. I mean. Right, this one has the orchestra pit removed. Oh. So this has much more uh, downstage depth than this one does. I present my ideas with a model and a rendering, but I show how to build the actual set units by means of technical drawings. This drawing is called floor plan. It's as if we've removed the roof of the stage and are looking straight down into the space. It shows the uh, exact positions of the tables and chairs and doors and the other set objects. Can you build a, can you build a stage or, um, not exactly a stage, but is that actual size, like if you multiplied that right. by size? Right, one half of an inch equals one foot. Oh, so you built the, um, the real stage play thing. Right, from, from these that. technical drawings. Yeah. Okay. This is called a painter's elevation. And it shows the actual colors and painting techniques that I wish to use on the real set pieces. You might want to compare this blue fish to this fish, to the actual size and shape of it. Yeah. Now I'd like for you to do a set design. You won't have read the play, but I'll describe the scene to you. It takes place in the cellar in the house of a countess. It's a, an ancient vault that uh, is deep in the ground. There's a large staircase that leads down into the space in the dark shadowy corners where you see packing boxes and bird cages and odds and ends that have been accumulated over the centuries. There's one special effect, and that is that when you remove one stone in the staircase, a trap door opens, revealing a circular staircase that leads down into the ground. I'd like you to draw that scene at the moment when that trap door opens. <laughs> 